Hey, this is Russ. You know, it's time to talk about you guys. <laughs> hey, I hope you guys had a great uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, I know I did, uh, but I did miss having more people over. <laughs> it was just my wife and me. And, um, you know, we had our Thanksgiving turkey early, but we did have a lot of Thanksgiving turkey leftovers during Thanksgiving uh, weekend. So let's talk about you guys. Now, you may remember that I asked you guys to send me information about you. Now, that could be uh, stories that you have uh, because you were successful with your knee replacements, or it could be stories where you're struggling, okay? And several of you actually reached out to me, and so we're gonna start today with, uh, with a good story with someone who actually did do well, all right? And then uh, we'll add on other people uh, throughout uh, the time. So, uh, so if you sent me information about you, yours is coming up, but we got to start somewhere. So we're going to start with uh, one of my former students. Okay. So you may know that I was teaching digital photography at my own digital photography school that I opened um, about eight years or so ago. And um, I remember him because we talked at length about our problems with our knees and all sorts of other stuff besides the photography. So uh, I'm starting out with him because he reached out first. So anyways, uh, we said that we will not tell the name of the person, but he did give me permission to say that he was a former student of mine. OK, so we will call him patient number one from Illinois. All right. That's basically all we're going to, to say. OK, he's a male patient number one from Illinois. All right. Uh, so anyways, I made some notes. And so if you see me looking off camera a little bit, it's because I'm looking at the computer monitor behind the camera uh, to kind of prompt me for the next notes. OK, so he gave me some detailed information about uh, his background and also uh, how he has been doing. So this one's a positive one. I thought we I thought we'd start out with a positive note of someone who actually did well, and then we'll go into um, more difficult ones uh, as as the weeks go by. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna put a link up here that tells you uh, to watch uh, the video that I mentioned if you would like to be included with this too. You know, I I would I think it would be helpful for others if we talked about your knees besides just my knees okay so please do that uh, send me some information via email and uh, you'll see in that video my email link there so you can send me photos of your knee and also stories about your knee and how you're doing and if you're struggling with it let us know that too and then just follow up every now and then to let me know so i can let the others know how you're doing good things and bad things bad things okay all right so first one he's a former student of mine he is 61 years old so He's from Illinois, and um, he had uh, torn meniscuses initially in January of 2014. And so he works um, uh, in the uh, grocery store uh, industry, and so he's walking quite a bit. And eventually, he kind of knew that his knees were going to need help, okay? <laughs> he, he did a lot of uh, bike riding, too, I guess, between... Um, uh, 2015 to 2018, he was riding 1,500 to 2,000 miles every summer. That's, that's a lot of biking. I don't even know if I've ever ridden that much in my entire life. So anyways, so he was a fairly active person. And of course, his job requires him to be on his feet all day long. So he, he puts in about 10,000 plus uh, steps per day. And he's got to carry things like 50-pound boxes or, or more. So uh, it, it was difficult for him. And so eventually he knew that he was going to have to have something done because he had uh, torn meniscuses in uh, 2014. Okay, He did go to a chiropractor, and he gave him, I guess, some braces for his uh, knees, and I guess he, he broke those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he broke those, and, and he says, oh, okay, we got to do something. So he started watching Russ is Right uh, around December of uh, last year, okay? So uh, by March, he was, uh, March of this year, he was searching for a doctor to, to be uh, able to do his knee surgery. So uh, he was scheduled to do uh, surgery in March, but because of the COVID-19 situations going on, he uh, had his surgery canceled. So they gave him a couple of uh, cortisone shots, um, and that wore off after two weeks. He tried cortisone earlier, I guess. He had it twice done before that, and it didn't last real long. So, you know, it's, you know the thing with the cortisone, you know, just a side note, um, it's a temporary fix. It's not a permanent fix, all right? It, so it can give you some relief from pain for a while, but eventually it's going to come back. So unless you want to keep injecting cortisone into you, 
uh, you, you, you're going to have to eventually do the surgery. All right. Now, you may ask about myself because I had torn meniscuses initially, too. I had mine done 16 years ago and I think um, 11 years ago, something like that, for, for each of the individual knees. The, the left knee, which is the operated knee for me, um, was the first one to have the, um, the, the scoping of my knee. So I never did the cortisone stuff. I, no, well, I take that back. I think I may have done it once. Yeah, I think we did it once. And it really didn't help that much. I mean, um, yeah, it relieved some pain, but I, I said, you know, I'm not going to keep doing this stuff. So I, I didn't do it. So eventually I, I had to do it. Anyways, so uh, he went and had his operation on Mar uh, May May 15th. And uh, he said that his wife always thought it's interesting when he gets out of anesthesia, he's kind of a fun guy to, to be around. <laughs> I'm assuming he was a little loopy <laughs> after the anesthesia. Um, I don't know how you guys are like that. Do you guys wake up a little, uh, <laughs> having a little bit of fun because of the anesthesia? I don't know. I, I think I normally wake up. I don't, I don't really get that, that loopy. So anyways, um, he, uh, he was able to actually walk on a walker, uh, because, because the, uh, the, the doctors, uh, usually want you walking the same day of your surgery. And I, I know I did that too. So he was walking with a walker, uh, down the hallways of the hospital and then, also down the steps. I, I had to do the stairs, I think it was the next day, but they made him do that on the first day. And because he was able to do steps and also going down the stairs um, successfully, they did not require him to stay overnight. So he, he was in and out <laughs> on the same day. So that's that's amazing. Um, he, uh, he did take pain pills, but after... Um, after the first day, he started doing over-the-counter Advil instead. Now, I, I did a similar thing. I started out with the pain pills. It didn't take one day, though. Um, I only took it really during physical therapy, just prior to th physical therapy. But after a while, I, I said, I'm not doing this. So I tried Advil, too. And I said, neither of these things work. Then I, I went from... I went from Norco to Advil, and then I said, forget this. We got got to get some heavier painkillers. So I went to... Uh, to, uh, high, uh, was it, uh, what is the <laughs> heavy doses thing? Oxycodone, right? I took that, um, and then I found that it really didn't do that much for me. So I, I stopped doing it. But again, in retrospect, I kind of felt that maybe I should have taken more pain pills that that would have allowed them to push harder, maybe. I don't know. So he, he went to Advil literally the next day, okay? So yeah, he's doing pretty good. Um, Two weeks after his surgery, he had the stitches removed, okay? His insurance only paid for 20 physical uh, therapy sessions in a year. So he did 12 physical therapy sessions and reserved eight more in case anything happened down the, down the road because, you know, you want some reserve because once you run out, you got to pay for physical therapy yourself, right? Uh, for myself, uh, as you know, I did 80 physical therapy sessions, and my insurance company paid for 60, but I had a copay of $50 per session. So I paid $4,000 into my physical therapy, and I, I probably would have continued on if it wasn't for the, uh, uh, the pandemic issue. So anyways, um, his last physical therapy, he says, was, um, and, and he, went, uh, <laughs> he went three times a week, all right? I was going like almost every day, all right? And uh, uh, his last physical therapy was July 4th. So he was able to get uh, zero degrees for his extension and 137 degrees on his own. And with a little bit of help of pushing, he was able to get 140 degrees. Now that took me forever to hit 130. I think it took me six months <laughs> to hit 130 degrees with pushing. On my own, I was able to do 120. Today, I am at 120 or more, it's possible I could be doing a little more, I don't know. I'm at 120 on my own and eight to 10 degrees for my extension. So he, he's doing really good. Uh, he went back to work on August 10th, uh, doing four hours a day uh, for two weeks, and then he went six hours a day for the next two weeks, and then finally after that, he was full-time again, okay? Now, keep in mind, too, that he, he has a, a fairly physical job. He's got to be on his feet all day long. He's lifting heavy boxes and everything like that. So he, he's doing pretty good, okay? Um, he said by the third week of his uh, uh, working of his knee, he was on stationary bikes, and he was doing um, about 10 minutes on it after a couple of weeks of uh, working on it. So he, uh, he had a cadence of 90, he said. So he, he's moving pretty good, but he, he's a former biker, right? He, he knows how to do it. So um, 
His advice to us is that you need to work hard on your physical things prior to surgery. Now, he was kind of analyzing why was my knee so bad. Now, he's known me for a bit because he's a former student of mine. And he kind of agrees that because I wasn't really active for many years, really, um, I'm sitting most of the time, as I am right now. <laughs> I'm sitting most of the time. I'm not doing a whole lot. Um, and because of that, you know, my muscles and my legs aren't really that strong. So jumping into the surgery that early on um, probably wasn't the smartest thing. I should have probably been working out until my, my legs were stronger and everything. So then after the surgery, I would have had a better chance. Okay. So uh, he agrees with that, I believe. And, and I, I agree too. I think you need to work hard prior to surgery now that's that's kind of difficult because you're hurting already all right so nobody wants to push more and harder but really you've got to build up that strength before the surgery and so um, after the surgery going back to your routines is a lot easier for me they're asking me to do things that i hadn't done for years uh, my amount of walking <laughs> let me tell you for at least eight years maybe even longer was getting up walking to my car going to the school getting into the building, uh, sitting down and talking, getting up, going back to the car, and going back home. <laughs> That's the amount of leg time I actually had for like eight years. So the chances of me being able to do all the exercises they expected me to do after, um, after the surgery was kind of hard. So yeah, you, you need to keep up your strength in your legs as best you can, even through the pain, okay? Uh, find other exercises. Do something to kind of keep yourself moving. And then after the surgery, you'll have a better chance. That's that's his suggestion. So that is his story. <laughs> a little bit of mine's in there too. And I hope that that's been encouraging to you. Now, some of you may look at it and says, well, okay, you know, we're all struggling. He did pretty good. Okay, don't look at it that way, all right? It's always good to be able to see that there are others that actually come out of this uh, pretty well. And you can do that too. I'm, I'm finding that as the days go on, my knees are getting better. So you're going to get better if you keep working at it. For me, I'm over 14 months now, and I'm still working on it, okay? And... I know it gets better all the time, so it takes me longer. I probably will get better um, than where I'm at right now, and I just want to keep working on it. So you need to do that too, all right? I've I've been lucky that you know Joint Active Systems Jazz has given me big back my stuff to help push me a little bit, okay? And I do that every single day. You know, you may ask, well, how how often are you on those leg braces? Um, up to three hours a day, all right? Think about it, I've got an extension unit, I've got a, a flexion unit. So uh, if you did the full recommended 30 minutes per session, that's 30 minutes times three for extension, 30 minutes times three for flexion. So if I did all that, it would be three hours a day. That's a lot, okay? Uh, I'm not doing as much now. Uh, I'm able to back off a little bit on it now. I'll probably do, on average, maybe about 20 minutes on average for each session. Um, sometimes I only do two out of the three sessions for my flexion because my flexion is pretty good now. It's, it's, it's 120 degrees. I need more help on that extension, really. <laughs> That's my problem. But anyways, uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you. Uh, we're going to do some more of these. Uh, I do have a couple other people who actually sent in for information, so I will feature them soon too. So this is patient number one in Illinois, okay? And he's welcome to send me more updates as he goes by, but I think his knees are pretty much in, in good shape at this point, okay? The others, yeah, they had some issues. So stay tuned for those, okay? And feel free to jump in and send me an email uh, and send me supporting uh, photos if you like too of what your knee looked like before and what it looks like today because I think people would like to see that. So the next one we're going to feature, we'll, we'll have a photo, okay? Anyways, I appreciate you uh, watching the video. And if you like what you've seen, um, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, send me some info about yourself, okay? You're always welcome to send comments on the comment sections too. But if you send it to me on email, of course, it's private. And I won't be revealing names, all right? Uh, tell me what I'm able to say and what I'm not able to say, and then I'll, I'll honor that too. All right, I will talk to you guys next time.